This episode of Satellite Sisters is brought to you by Lost and Found in Paris by me, Leon Dolan. That's right, my new book is out April 5th. It's an art history treasure hunt with romance, wit, intrigue, and Paris. C'est magique. Lost and Found in Paris comes out in April, but you can pre-order now at your favorite local indie or at any online book retailer. That's right. Order now. Spend April in Paris. Merci. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a satellite sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. It's so great to be with you today. I'm Leanne Dolan here in Pasadena, California. I'm the youngest sister, but guess what? I'm getting older this week. It's right. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. So Liz, Julie, what'd you get me for my birthday? Jewel, what'd you get? Well, this is Julie Dolan in Dallas, Texas. And uh, Leanne, I think you have to view my gift giving to you as an annual body of work rather than a specific spot check on, let's just say, your birthday. Because I feel, for example, that I had a very strong fourth quarter with some surprise gifts (laughs) when you arrived in Dallas, Mm -hmm. okay, and helped launch your look for the book tour, followed by a very tasty salt lick brisket that was for the holidays, but due to the supply chain arrived in the first quarter of 2022. (laughs) And I think you can anticipate growth in the gift giving area, Leon, uh, in the second quarter of 2022, when you will probably be coming back through Dallas to do a book event. So that's how I think about it, sister. So have a happy birthday. Thank you. So nothing for my birthday. Is that correct? (laughs) Okay. Okay, Liz, well, how about you? What do you get me for my birthday? I know. It sounds like Julia has some kind of spreadsheet going now, Leanne. So that's, that is promising. Yeah, this is Liz Dolan. I'm in Santa Monica. I'm the middle sister. Okay, I have a birthday related confession to make to you, Leanne. You know, I did invite you to Santa Monica for dinner on Friday night. You and your husband are coming because another mutual friend of ours is in town. I thought that would be fun. We will all have dinner together. And it was only after I invited you, you accepted that I thought, oh my God, that's great because her birthday is the next day. So now I'm covered for her birthday. <laughs> but when I invited you for dinner, I was not aware that it was your birthday. But anyway, but don't worry, it will be it will be covered on Friday night. <laughs> Isn't it Robin's birthday too? She oh, know? yeah. No, her birthday is April, I think. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't know why I thought that. It's all right. with birthdays. Yes. <laughs> I, the truth is I don't really care. Like I'm as the youngest of eight children, I was just happy to be acknowledged by anyone on my birthday. So I don't, I'm not someone yes. who celebrates a birthday month or old. Well, that's clearly, and I, 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 I have a whole year <laughs> plan for you. All right. <laughs> You know what? I am happy to be here and I'm happy to be turning 57. So uh, fantastic on February 19th. Um, okay, Liz, uh, you're, you have some break, breaking news. So we're going to get to you right off the bat. Okay. Uh, but also breaking is not news. funny, Lee, and I do not enjoy breaking jokes, but okay. I know. I'm I, sorry. I, <laughs> I'm I got sorry. it. Joking. Okay. We, of course, we'll talk about the Olympic figure state skating debacle. Makes you miss Tanya Harding, doesn't it? Uh <laughs> Makes you miss her. Uh, we have a bitter business bureau. Uh, Liz, yes. you're bringing us that story. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Okay. okay. Also, did you know everyone in America is getting married this year? Had you heard this? Whoa, like, if, you, yeah. if you're not married yet, apparently 2022 is the year that 2.5 million weddings are happening. A record most since 1984. So I have some thoughts on that for grooms brides, mothers of the bride, mothers of the groom, and guests, how we can all help this happen, how how we can help 2.5 million couples have a happy wedding. Uh, we have entertaining sisters. We have some thoughts on the Oscar hosts and a few other things happening on today's show. But Liz, okay, tell the people, tell the people what happened this week. Okay. Plot twist. Yes. Yeah. And for those of you who are very alarmed, I did post a photo of my wrist with a fall risk bracelet on it. I did not mean to alarm you. I did not take a new fall. However, here's what did happen. So, you know, I've been healing from the accident I had last year, the broken knee and the broken leg, and things were going exceedingly well with old lefty until they weren't. 
you know, it just I like I stopped getting better. So it turns out that old lefty required some, I'll just call them additional surgical repairs mm-hmm. because they're too gruesome to actually describe on the podcast. So Good I mean, idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's I can thank you, Liz. And I know <laughs> you don't like talking about it most importantly. So well, let's not talk about it. We're yeah. not going to talk about it, but we are going to talk about the procedural roller coaster, Julie, because, okay. So this surgery was scheduled for last Friday. Uh, so, you know, when you're, going in for surgery, there are just a lot of things you have to schedule. You know, somebody needs to take you there. Somebody needs to take care of your dog. Somebody, there was just a lot of planning that needed to go in for the Friday appointment. But then Thursday morning, I got an email and I'll just say from nurse A, I'm not going to use her real name here um, just to protect the guilty Um, email, email from nurse A saying, Oh, sorry, we have to cancel your surgery tomorrow. It'll be in two weeks. And you guys know, I like, I was super bummed because I didn't want to have to have a second surgery, but I want, I certainly wanted to get it over with. Right. So then I acknowledge with nurse a like, okay, well, that's a bummer. Um, yeah. All right. I guess I can do the 25th. And then I spend most of the rest of the day, Thursday, undoing everything I had done. So canceling the ride to the, uh, to the surgical center, canceling the dog sitter, canceling, canceling the physical therapy appointment. So, uh, I do all that. And, and I told you guys, and you guys know uh, how bummed I was. Yes, not to just, right. I just need to get this behind me. Right. Mm-hmm. So then at the end of the day, I was working and I was on a zoom call for work and my cell phone rang and I could see that it was the surgical center where the procedure was going to be done. And I, I just kind of ignored it because obviously that couldn't be urgent because I wasn't going in for another two weeks. So I ignored that. And then like I went to sleep and uh, in the middle of the night, I woke up and I thought, I never really even listened to that message. I guess, even though I think I know what it is. I should just listen to make sure. So at three o'clock in the morning, I listened to the message from the surgical center and it is just reconfirming my surgery for Friday morning at 10 a.m. And I'm like, oh God, they, you know, they did not get the appointment. They did not get the word from the surgeon's office that this has been canceled. And I thought the last thing I want is to like be a no-show for a surgery and somehow get charged. Yeah, that could be, right. that could be yes. pricey, Liz. Yes. That could be an expensive mistake. So at three o'clock in the morning, I call the surgical center, get the voicemail. And I'm like, just wanted to let you know the doctor canceled that surgery tomorrow. I am not coming in. And then I roll over and go back to sleep. So get up early, six time, I'm out walking Hooper uh, early in the morning. The phone, then the phone rings at 6.45 a.m. And so this is now Friday morning and it's the surgical center saying, are you sure your surgery is scheduled? Because the doctor did not tell us that. I said, yes, I'm sure because I got an email confirming it in writing from nurse A. So no, it's off. I am rescheduled for two weeks. She's like, okay. And then it's a half an hour later, again, I'm still out walking Hooper because I walk so slowly. Um, nurse Day calls and she's like, did the doctor call you and cancel your surgery? And I said, no. I said, you canceled my surgery. And she said, no, I didn't. I was like, yes, you did. She's like, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. That went back and forth for a while. I was like, I got an email from you yesterday morning canceling my surgery. She said, no, no. And then all of a sudden there was silence and a gasp on her end. And she's like, I did not mean to send that to you. Oh, (laughs) right. Oh, so she made a mistake. So she made a mistake. She was canceling someone else, but canceled me by accident. So then she's like, hang on, hang on. Let me see if I, if I, if we can do you today, can you, can you come? I'm like, well, of course now I have no ride and I have no this and I have no that. And I'm sure sure you were nice. And remember that was the nice. (laughs) Yes. Right. (laughs) Exactly. She said, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to talk to the surgical center. If we can get you in today, we will do it. So she comes back on like a minute later. She's like, okay, you're still good for this morning. Uh, Can you be there? I was like, well, 
now I have no ride. So now I have to like scramble to like, you know, uh, what is it? Is it Uber now? I don't know what I'm going to do. So yeah, yeah, I'll try to get there. But this is, I, here are the words that I used. It just in a very calm way, I said, nurse A, this does not inspire confidence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. She's like, right. I know, I know, I know. And then she said, you know, I feel so bad about this. This is 100% my fault. I will give you a ride. I will come pick you up and then I will bring you home. I will give you a ride. And at first I started to say, well, you don't need to do that. And then I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you do need to do that because I really don't have the time this morning to like redo the entire schedule, including transpo. So that's what ended up happening. So the nurse comes over to my home and picks me up Friday morning, takes me to the surgical center. On the way there, she gives me the piece of paper. You know how when you have these procedures like a colonoscopy or anything like this, that's a day surgery, they have to call the person who's picking you yeah. up when you're ready. Yeah. So she said, okay. She wrote her name on the piece of paper, just her first name and then cell phone number. And she said, please don't tell them it's me. Just say it's your friend. And then she used her real name. It's so your now friend. you're a co-conspirator in a medical crime. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Julie. She said, I think I could actually get fired for this. Oh, and, poor thing. you know, so you don't want, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. But then again, mm, that's a pretty major <laughs> Let so, the record show yeah. I did offer to come out right yes, away. Yes, you I did. Said, yes. Do you need yes. anything? And you right. text back, no, I'm I'm good. It's all taken care of. So yes. we had no idea this drama was unfolding. <laughs> we thought your team was back in place and you were exactly. all set to go. Yes. So. And they would have been without the snafu. So when she said, please don't tell them it's me, I was like, okay. Like I'm I, like I'll cover you but i said could you please make sure the doctor knows that this was your error not my error and she said yes i promise you i will i will tell him so then we pull up in front of the surgical center and like one of the transpo or orderly people is out front getting someone else and she literally ducks down in the car <laughs> oh my gosh oh dear oh yeah. boy. So, so now it's a workplace comedy right yeah. now you've completely <laughs> shifted <laughs> to workplace comedy anyway it all went fine as far as i can tell the surgery went fine uh she came back she picked me up she brought me home brought me up into my apartment to make sure i was okay so i'm very grateful to nurse a uh and she did tell the doctor and all of that anyway so it was just such an emotional roller coaster because when you get ready for a surgery right it's very emotional to just yes. try to feel like you have things under control so and i'm just super glad what if i hadn't listened to that message in the middle of the night i know liz it's just yes. been a complete no show then it would have totally been anyway so that's the latest so old lefty back on the mend this morning even when we got on the zoom julie you noticed how spry i was Liz, walking around. you were like zipping around i haven't seen you <laughs> zip in yes. quite some time so it's impressive yes yep Get, getting my zip back so anyway that is the report i did not take a fall they just insisted on putting that on me while i was in the surgical center so thank you for caring well that's All it right. certainly distracted you from any sort of pre-op jitters because yes. there's so much else going on <laughs> i'm sure you can put that on the comment card so. <laughs> All right. Well, while you were doing that, Liz, uh, Leon, Leon and I were watching the Olympics and watching the news. And I, I think it's official now that the Olympics is a complete mess. Can we say that right? Yeah, I mean, right. The governing bodies have ruined the games mm -hmm. for the athletes and for the fans. I mean, the big mm -hmm. news this week, of course, was the International Sports Court. And who is on this court? I, I, I don't know. Did we vote for these people? I don't know. But they ruled that my girl, Camilla Valieva, the Russian, well, she's not, she is Russian and Russia is really not competing at the Olympics, but they're all there competing at the Olympics. So that's yeah. a whole nother situation <laughs> that she could compete in the individual women's event 
despite testing positive for a banned substance. They said because Camila is only 15, she is considered a protected person in the court's view, and that there were different standards for the protected in terms of, you know, both the sanctions that they could in place. And they felt if they didn't let her skate, that it would cause irreparable harm. So she's there skating. But uh, it, uh, but if she were to happen to win any other event, win any other events, they're not going to dis- distribute medals to all the skaters because I don't know why. So until they resolve this even more. So it's just a complete mess. Right. 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 And but here's here's my take on it. OK, I think her coaches, I don't know whether it's her mother. I don't know the adults in her life that were, were helping to shape her life as the world-class figure skater that she is, that she is they are responsible. Uh, but I find it absolutely painful and atrocious that the world is dumping on this 15-year-old girl. She's only 15, okay? And I, you know, I, I don't know what she did, what she didn't do. I don't know who gave her the heart medicine to take or who didn't. You know, I don't think any of us know that. Um, and it certainly has created a mess, but I think to, you know, hold her responsible, you know, and to, I, I just, I, uh, it's unconscionable and I just feel so sorry for her. Um, that's so you're okay with her skating. Well, y- yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, they, I mean, now that, now that that's the ruling, I want to see her skate because I think she's the greatest skater ever. Yes, I would like to. But I feel like I don't know how she's going to be able to do this now. Like she's 15 and she knows the entire world hates her. Okay, that is a terrible that's a terrible position for her to be in. Yeah, it's all terrible, but she absolutely can't skate. She tested positive for a banned substance. Right. I I mean, it's Russia. It's like they 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 invented state sponsored doping. I, mean, I know. So, I mean, I would throw I the whole delegation out. I yeah, mean, that but, would have been better. It would have been more. It would have protected her more. This is sort of almost worse for her, I think, you know, that uh, that she is such a, you know, she is a pariah. Everybody hates her now. Well, so. it's certainly good for Russia because it pretty much sanctions what they were doing. And the the you know, to me, the message is, oh, it's OK if you dope younger athletes, younger than 16. That's fine, because now everyone's yeah. going to feel terrible for them like you do. And, you know, it's underststandable, but it seems even more exploitive of a 15 year old athlete who has yes, clearly, it does. No, it's, clearly been I handled think- by her coaches and that coach coaches the top three Russian skaters there. So the idea that this is a one-off, oh gosh, I took my grandpa's heart medicine, which is what she said. I mean, come on. I mean, we, we've seen the state sponsored thing before. It wasn't a joke in Sochi. I was very moved by all the athletes from 2014 when this story broke, you know, speaking out on Twitter, I follow a lot of Olympic athletes. Like you have no idea what this did to us when we came back and found out that all those athletes in our sports were doped and like no one cared. There was nothing they could do after the fact. I, I just don't understand why she's there. I watched the skate this morning. I'm not going to say anything other than like it, it made me angry and upset. I thought the Johnny Weir and Tara Lipinski did an amazing job announcing it because it's just not fair to those other skaters. I, I just, and, it, and it's just not the way anti-doping works either even if she had she flunked that drug test in december correct as we all know now the russians covered up her drug test results so that it didn't come out until now so now of course there's no time to resolve it which is what creates the whole delay and that nobody gets to have their medal stand moment and nobody gets to get their little teddy bear and nobody gets to celebrate. No, I know the whole thing is a mess. I'm not saying that, but I, I just feel like there's an undue focus on her as if she is responsible. No, she yeah. is. She's not. Okay. I mean, she's a young girl and 
Uh, she's part of a corrupt system. That's and, you know, so all the apparent the adults, the coaches around her, they you know, they're the ones they all should be kicked out. Yeah, no, I know. But and in, in, they're not that's not going to happen in 24 hours. So, yeah, the very simple solution is to not have her skate again. She's only 15. She could skate again in the next Olympics. Yeah. You know, although Russia has a history with these young girls, so it's sort of one and done for them. They kind of run through them. They're very young. So I, I just, I feel a lot worse for the other skaters skating against her and for all yeah. the athletes there. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't feel that, you know, I, also, I, I do yeah. feel sorry for her, but those aren't the rules. Yeah. And it, it just undermines the entire. entire no, I know. I, I, that's I, the thing. Yeah. And, you know, anti-doping measures just can't work if the athletes don't believe in their fairness. You have to just keep reinforcing that it's a fair system in order for anyone to play along. And you guys know I work in the sports business. I particularly work in track and field, where obviously there have been a lot of issues in track and field with doping. So I follow a lot of the news on this. And there's an organization called Global Athlete, which is sort of a clean sport organization for athletes. And I thought their statement that they put out yesterday really kind of nailed it. Because they said it's blatantly clear she would never been placed in this position if the World Anti-Doping Agency, the IOC, and the Court of Arbitration for Sport had done their jobs and banned Russia from global yes, sport. It's all Russia, right. Russia has never been incentivized to to reform because sport leaders favored politics over principle and rebranding over banning. And I think that last part is so the idea that it's this Russian Olympic Committee, come on. I mean, it's just the whole thing is just ludicrous. Yeah. And you it's a it, mess. And you can compare it to some of the athletes in track and field this summer who got banned. Shelby Houlihan was one and she could not compete in the Olympic trials. Obviously, Shakari Richardson was another one. She failed the drug test and within days, her drug test results went public. Anyway, it's these big institutions are just not serving the athletes well at all. And they're just so corrupt from the inside. I don't even know how you fix that. Right, right. Well, I'll tell you, watch the skating tonight you may change your mind how you feel about her being there. I just, I, I found it super upsetting. So, uh, yeah, no, so. I, no, I think it, no, I, I mean, I'm not defending them, Lee, and you know that I, it's very upsetting for all the athletes. I just, I find it very, I do find it very upsetting that, you know, so many people are piling on a 15 year old girl. I mean, that's it. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say about that. It's just her mere presence is a, is a problem. So I, you know, and she's only 15. So she, I, I know <laughs> she would have another opportunity theoretically. So, all right, we're just going to move on to some other <laughs> Olympic moments. Then one good news and an ice rink, Aaron Jackson, seeing the first black woman to medal in speed skating. That was a great moment in that 500 meter sprint. Very that was exciting. exciting. Yeah. Opens up good hopefully for possibilities for young athletes. She was uh, you know, she was the one that had not qualified. She had fallen, even though she was the world championship and her teammate graciously said, take my spot. And then they both ended up being able to compete for a variety of reasons, but it's just a great satellite sister story. And she's an inspiring young athlete. Fantastic. Uh, the monobob. Did you see this event? <laughs> what's, what's your position on the monobob, Leanne? I'm this, curious. Even as I watch it, I think to myself, I wonder what Leanne is thinking about this. Okay. I feel like I've been monobobbing for decades now because that is like pushing a full grocery cart, like through the store and then hopping into the grocery <laughs> cart. Like, <laughs> that's what it looks like. First of all, it looks miserable. Like it looks hard and then I don't understand it. I mean, I think the best part of the bobsled is when they all jump in the bobsled. Like yeah. that's the most exciting port part. So seeing one person jump in the bobsled. Okay. But you know, we had, we had two American medals in it. So you can't, I'm not going to quibble. It's a big sport now for us, Liam. Yeah. So keep, keep practicing there at Safeway, Liam. <laughs> yeah. All right. I feel personally, there are now too many jumping contests. I mean, oh, last night they're just jumping everywhere. There's the, the slope style and the big air and the aerials and the half pipe. And it's all the same people. And they're, they're jumping on skis and they're jumping on snowboards and they're jumping in tubes. And I just, a lot of jumping. And I would mm. like to get back to sports on the ground that are timed. I feel like those are good sports too. So too much jumping. Uh, 
but nobody works hard. Speaking of that, those Nordic athletes, I'm always amazed at what they do. Uh, you know, the, the, and the they are so the fit. Relays, they're so fit. Holy cow. That is such a hard sport. It was so, it's been so cold there. Uh, Julie, your biathlon is in that category. I know you've been a big fan and now everyone's getting on your bandwagon. Right? I, I know, Lee, and I saw the new. New York Times has now decided that the biathlon is uh, the new curling event. Like it's cool now. Uh, let's just, for those of you who've been listening to Satellite Sisters, how long have I been enthusiastic about the biathlon? It's always been my favorite event. Yeah, right? 15 time. years, yeah. maybe. Well, since just, you were living in Russia. Right. right? You, 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 you're, you're sick of hearing me talk about the biathlon. Okay. And now the New York Times thinks it's cool. Okay. Well, you're a little late, NYT. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. And finally, I have to say, it's just a crossover event. Okay. We are getting the Summer Olympics in 28 here in Los Angeles. I feel like if we just take the halftime show from the Super Bowl, which I thoroughly enjoyed and was so LA centric, and we just put that as the opening ceremony with a few, like I get some flags and put <laughs> and do the same thing okay. in 2028. It's going to be great. Like, Done. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to produce it? Go, go after it. I just it. did, Julie. I just did. I just did for who's ever listening. Mary J, just stay in those boots. Just stay in the boots for the next four years, five years, and you'll be great. I just yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it'll totally work for the Olympics. I think some sort of special award for the boots needs to be invented between now and 28 because she was awesome and they were awesome. Yes. Fantastic. You know what? I also thought her um, ad for um, breast cancer awareness was the most effective ad of the, of the whole Super Bowl. I thought, you know, black women have a very low rate of getting diagnosed early. Uh, they wait too long to go get their mammograms. And I just thought it was a really powerful ad. Plus she looked great. Mm -hmm. It was a well done ad, well shot. I loved it. So, okay, Mary, Mary J won the Super Bowl. As far as, <laughs> okay. As far as okay, we can all agree on that. We can all agree on that. We all agree on that. A big thanks to Pros, the world's most personalized hair care. Liz, I know you have been a fan of Pros for a while. You've been our designated Pro sister. Yeah. But I have joined the Pros fan club. <laughs> I mean, I got my, I got my, took my quiz, uh -huh. got my shampoo. I okay. got, look at this giant like report card I got about <laughs> my hair. I'm sorry. I know it's a podcast and no one else can see it, but it's, I mean, okay. I feel great about my Pros. <laughs> Pro Makes situation. you feel like you're in command of your hair now, right? Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. I took the questionnaire and, and then I get, then I get everything I need. I, uh -huh. I cannot sing the praises enough of the leave-in conditioner. Now, oh. do you need that? Do you need a leave-in conditioner? Maybe I do. <laughs> well, I, they would have sent it to you if you did. Liz. Oh, then maybe I don't. <laughs> they would have recommended it. It would have been prescribed. Okay. Yes. They see, look at all the paper I have telling me about my hair and the botanicals they put in it. Anyway, cannot sing the praises enough. So pros, thank you so much. Here's what we're talking about. They analyze over 85 personal factors, and then they determine a unique blend of ingredients to treat your exact concerns. And then you can review and refine. You can tweak, uh, tweak the formula if it doesn't work for you. But when they sent this, this shampoo, now I have a four-step process. I have different hair. It is shiny and soft and combable. Liz, it's combable. Oh, combable. I, I didn't even oh. know I needed more combable hair. And <laughs> now I have it. I just love it. Congratulations, so Liz, Liz, Leanne. Congratulations. Liz, thank you. I mean, yeah. I, I finally just one day used the code and, and ordered pros. And it has and your I, name on it, right? Your bottles come personalized. I love it. I love which it. Which for someone with a constantly misspelled name like you must yes. be just nice reinforcement in the shower every day. Yeah. I mean, even the letter I got from Press was, hi, Leanne, welcome to a new chapter in your hair story. One we've written together. Thank you, Pros. Very as a writer, emotional. As a writer, I really appreciate that, Pros. <laughs> Anyone can write with me. Fantastic. All right. We also like Pros because they're a carbon neutral certified B Corps, and they're an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty, which is fantastic. All of their ingredients are sustainably sourced ethically gathered and cruelty free. They're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral. So if you're not hundred percent positive about pros like me, they want to take the products back. No questions asked. That's nice of you pros, but really I'm not sure anyone will need it. Pros is the healthy hair regime with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash sisters and pros is spelled P-R-O-S-E dot com slash sisters. 
for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. Thanks, pros. Pros.com slash sisters. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. They make eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto or paleo or vegan or vegetarian or gluten-free or just Liz Dolan looking to eat more (laughs) balanced meals. Uh Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preference. Liz, you're our green chef. Is that fair to say? I I am. And I really love it. It allows me to just eat in a more balanced way, Leanne. And also, Leanne, eat a wider range of foods than I would eat on my own. Okay. So like the other night, I made their veggie and bean stuffed peppers. Now, you know, stuffed peppers are sort of a staple, but you get into a stuffed pepper rut, don't you? It's the same old things in the stuffing, not with green chefs. So this has red bell peppers stuffed with pinto beans and kale and corn. And you know, those magic words, a green chef that I love so much, chimichurri sauce, Lee. (laughs) It was, it was delicious all on a bed of rice. One delicious dinner. Liz, they make cooking easy. You spend less time stressing and more time enjoying those delicious meals. You get that chef curated flavor in less time. I know you're all about that. And you know what? Liz Dolan is not waiting in grocery store lines. Right, Liz? No, no. (laughs) Not doing it. It's so convenient. It arrives at your house, pre-portioned, easy to follow recipes. I like the actual looks of the recipe cards too. I like having the photos. I think the recipes are well described and well written and step by step. So you also learn to cook along with it. Yes. And it saves you time with you're not meal planning, you're not grocery shopping, and you're not prepping. Fantastic. So if you are interested in being a green chef like Liz, here's <laughs> what you're gonna want. Here's what you're gonna want to do. Go to greenchef.com slash sisters130 and use code sisters130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. That's a great order. Mm -hmm. That's greenchef.com slash sisters and use code sisters130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Thanks, Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Okay, sisters, I'm always disappointed when we have to award a citation from the Bitter Business Bureau because we did, it is not our intention to be bitter no. about businesses. You know, we support you businesses if you support us. But cross that line, boom, you're going to get cited by the Bitter Business Bureau. And I'm talking about you, IBM, Big Blue, come on. So there was a big story in the paper the other day as a result of a you know multi-year study. Headline is IBM executives discussed phasing out older employees documents show. And it's a whole lengthy review. There's a court case going on about it now, and they just released a bunch of documents. IBM was accused of age discrimination. And you know what? I think any of us that are of a certain age, like, we know it's going on, right? Right. right. <laughs> like, right. really, who's kidding who? And so, but they actually, in their documents, have, uh, they have written plans for how to phase out older employees and phase in newer employees or what they call, I think they're, they had sort of a word for them was like early professional hires is what they called them. Uh. So. Yes, they want, which is just, okay, that's code for young. And, young, you know, right. They wanted digital natives, right? Yes. Yes. Isn't yeah. that term, oh, you know, as if, as if we're not, right? I know. Well, we're not, but I understand. <laughs> they are, they are a technology company. So it's not like I even have a problem with them wanting to make sure they have employees that are like super comfortable with the new technology. But what really got to me is the insulting and disrespectful language they use in these documents where they're plotting to get rid of us. In one document, <laughs> it's like they can at least be nice about it. But one document said they want to, oh, and this is such corporate speak, accelerate change. Accelerate change by inviting the dino babies to leave and make them an extinct species. Oh, some, some oh wow. wrote that in a document referring to like older employees as dino babies. Is this going to be a jury trial? Can I get on the jury? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, then Julie, you'll appreciate another email referring to older women. Get this as quote, dated maternal workforce. Oh gosh. That they had. That made me mad. (laughs) Uh, 
and and they said that and then they were also going through some layoffs you know many companies go through this and i've been inside big companies where you have to decide who to lay off and so they had guidelines in their layoffs that no quote early professional hires could be included in a mass layoff so if you've ever thought wow it seems like they just laid off all the old people and kept all the young people you are correct you are correct that is exactly <laughs> what the strategy is doing anyway ibm come on big blue big baby <laughs> boom boom blue i would just say this i would boycott ibm except they don't make anything i want anyway so <laughs> boom <laughs> Nailed them the digital dinosaurs themselves. There you go. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe because they didn't yeah. have enough young employees, but that's another whole thing. Okay. Bit okay. Of business bureau. There you go. Good. Uh, good report, Liz. Okay. I have. I need Liz and Lee, and we, you know, from time to time in Satellite Sisters, we just have to call out things that are not true or that are rude or incorrect. And there was an article in the Wall Street Journal recently uh, written by Chris Friesweck. And the name of the article was Shu Betcha. And she she has taken offense with taking her shoes off when she goes to other people's houses. OK, her and she has a multi point rationale for why uh, she doesn't have to take her shoes off. OK, now she does at the beginning of her article say that she'll take her shoes off if for religious or cultural reasons, but just for anyone else who's just trying not to have, who, you know, who takes their shoes off while they're in their homes, she doesn't want to do it because she thinks their floors are probably filthier than the bottom of her shoes. Okay. And this is a long article. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Hey, it seems like I a just dumb thing to spend a lot of time on. That's I know. Right. I know. I just don't get this. I mean, it's am I wrong? Am I wrong? I mean, it just is rude. If someone would prefer you to take their your shoes off when you go to their house, take your shoes off, right? <laughs> right. I or don't mean, go to their house. Or don't that's I mean, just stay in your house. She's right. like, oh, well, there's a doormat or, you know, babies are very germy. They're germy. If they have babies in the house, then your floors aren't really that clean or pets. How about that? They're dirt. I mean, it's just terrible. I, and I don't I don't know why she wrote this. I don't know why she was given the room to write. This. <laughs> and, it, and it's you just what I saw she was referred to as a humor writer. So I think maybe they thought it was funny. I don't know. I don't know. But it's just unkind. Okay. <laughs> you're right. Isn't it? It's, the, it's basically you're not respecting the, right. the person you're visiting. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just right. take your shoes off. Okay. Right. okay. Do it. Yeah. Uh, it's true of many rules in people's homes. You should just go by their rules. If they say don't right. do X, Y, Z, just don't do that. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why you would push back on something this simple. And most people who have that rule, they also have like, nice guest flip-flops for you. I mean, I like that. I like I, I, Oh, she doesn't like those, Lee, and she thinks those are really germy too. She had oh, comments goodness. about that, but I just is so self-absorbed. It okay? is. Yeah. Get out of your, get out of yourself. Yeah. Or stay home. Just stay home. Well, I think she's not going to get invited anywhere anymore anyway, Joel. So, <laughs> okay. okay. I, think the, I think the problem is solved. No one's inviting her anywhere. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, hey, she's probably not going to get invited to one of the 2.5 million weddings that are going to be this year. Okay. Wow. I don't know if you all have noticed the explosion of wedding articles in every every paper, every website, you know, every email newsletter I get. A lot of people have been sitting on the sidelines most of the pandemic, rescheduling, rescheduling, or maybe they met during the pandemic and their relationship is accelerated. All we know is they are going for it in 2022. 2.5 million couples are supposed to get married this year. Now, normally pre pandemic, it was around 2 million couples mm -hmm. that got married a year. So this is a lot more couples. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do some math, which I did, that is 48,000 weddings every weekend in America. <gasps> oh my God. When you put it that way, that's right. crazy. Right. <laughs> okay. So that's I feel like as a country, we have to pull together to get this done because weddings are so fraught with emotion anyway, and right. uh -huh. bad feelings and, you know, people get hurt and talk yeah. about 
bridezilla rules or do this or they're expensive yes. and yes. you know they can overwhelm people and it's hard to pull them all off so i feel like we all have to be on our best behavior to help these 2.5 million couples walk down the aisle in whatever way they choose to walk down mm-hmm. the aisle so i've i've taken i've taken all the articles i've absorbed the material and i'm spitting it out uh in a new fashion okay i have some advice this is what we need to do okay brides and grooms are you a bride and groom you have to be flexible this year. Chances are the event space you wanted already booked. There was an event space planner in New York who said she, he, he described brides and grooms as aggressive now when they're booking aggressively booking places. (laughs) That sounds fun. First of all, to be in a wedding. Wow. (laughs) So be flexible, uh, have the wedding you want and can afford. Okay. Micro weddings were very big during the pandemic yes. 10, 12 people. Fine. The most popular size for weddings these days is around 75 to hundred people. That's a small amount of people. If you have family and friends. So, okay. And you can afford that. Do that. Great. Have the wedding you want that you can afford to give with the number That's of people sensible. you want and yeah. don't let anyone else tell you what to do with your wedding. Mm-hmm. Here's what brides and grooms need to do, Liz. They need to focus on their VIPs. Oh, okay. okay. Liz, All you're right. always a VIP. No, thank you. you thank you. But, um, you know, this is not the year to invite the friend of your mom's friend, right? Okay. You, you right. want to stick with the people who really mean a lot to you, your VIPs. You don't have to invite your entire bridge club, your mom's entire bridge club okay. or your dad's golf bunnies. Or your, bunnies. how about your okay. Instagram influencers? Should we yeah. not invite the Instagram influencers? <laughs> All right. Do everybody a favor, brides and grooms, and register for at least a few low cost items. Yes. Because basically your friends are going to go broke going to all these weddings and we'll get to the guests later. But so have a few simple, lovely, thoughtful, low priced items on your registry. Remember, not about things. It's about people. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the mobs and the mods, the mothers of the bride and the mothers of the groom. Okay. Here's what experts recommend. You first of all need to get along. This is not the time to air your dirty laundry. Like pull it together. Come on, America. We yeah. gotta get married. Right. All right. So, you yeah. have to su- support the bride and groom. It doesn't matter what the bride and groom chooses. A micro, a macro, a mid macro, around a hundred people. Not your wedding. Right. Mother of the bride, mother of the groom. Not your wedding. Here's what you can do stealthily along the outsides of the wedding. Okay. Cause they said, Liz and Julie, so many business opportunities in the wedding business. Now you're going to see anybody with the turntable jumping in and calling themselves a, a, a DJ, you know, oh, yeah. like, Oh, I I've always wanted to do flowers for a wedding. Oh, I'm a, I'm a wedding flower person now. <laughs> oh, Hey, I have a camera. Can I be a wedding photographer? So there are going to be a lot of those people circling in. So mothers of the brides and grooms, that's what you can do. You can really suss out who's an actual professional and who's not. That would be helpful. That's helpful. Oh, checking the references. Yeah. yeah. That's a good service. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, finally for guests, are you one of the the millions of people that will be invited to a wedding this year. I just want to offer up a prayer for our Gen Z and younger millennials who will be attending a dozen weddings this year. I mean, I mean, if all their friends are getting married at the same time, it's that is that, how do they afford that? I don't know. You know what, Julie, I saw this figure. I was stunned that the average guest spends $480 to attend a wedding between the gift and the the travel and any hotel room you might need and the clothing. That's a lot of money. So if, I mean, that's a lot of money for a young person. So, uh, so here's what you need to be do guests. You need to be ready. You need to be flexible too. just go to the wedding on Tuesday. Sure. If they schedule it on Tuesday, that's Uh when the wedding is go on Tuesday. Okay. If they have specific vaccination requirements, do it or don't go to the wedding. Just shut up about it. Now people are making up their own rules. (laughs) And if you don't fit up, just don't go to the wedding. Right. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Leanne says, yeah. Okay. And the a number one trend, all wedding planners are seeing brides and grooms are saying they want at the wedding. Julie, can you guess what it is? They want fun. Julie, they want fun. Oh, well, that's have. Fun. So if you I mean, are not going with an attitude of fun, don't go to the wedding. Right. Okay? Really, really like the, okay. the woman who won't take her shoes off at your house. <laughs> yeah. She not fun. No fun. She's okay. off the list. She's, she's a she's, fun she's, sucker. So no yes. fun suckers. at yes. the wedding. Yeah. yeah. So like they, what kind of fun, Leon? what's the new fun that the kids today are having? Well, Julie, I know you're going to be into this because you love a traditional things, uh, <laughs> interactive entertainment. Okay. Oh. So maybe the band leader decides to do a whole medley from Hamilton, some solos from Hamilton, get on board. Julie. 
Okay. <laughs> how about how about a fortune teller over in the corner? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Tell yeah, me fortune. Sure. Yeah. It's like a win-win situation on a wedding day to start <laughs> predicting things. A yes. fantastic idea. Have, yeah, sure. Have a psycho in the corner. That's a good <laughs> <Yeah>. idea. <laughs> Psychic, not psycho. Psychic. <laughs> and then, how about a pro dancer to teach everybody like a great dance? And well, Liam, you would love that. Sure. You I would think have. It's fun. I mean, I that's basically fun. a bar mitzvah move. You're just yeah. graduating it up in the age group. Yeah. yeah, sure. And then finally, one little style thing you're going to see a lot of, Julie. And this was your era, so you may may enjoy this '70s style. Okay. Okay. For all you dino babies, come here. <laughs> I got a wedding. <laughs> Good take. That's good. Okay. Blue get out those, people. get you out those maxi songs. dresses. Yeah. It, yes. In the seventies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, those and gunny then, sacks. Is yeah. gunny sacks oh, yeah. business? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good luck for 70s. Big letter. floppy hats. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they said one look that's really coming back for everything from invites to place cards is pressed flowers. Mm. So, wow. That's like summer camp, 1981. <laughs> it's coming back. Okay. Okay. Coming back at you. How about mini footballs? Are those bigger weddings, Sonny? <laughs> no. Just, I think this is all hardly like a wedding at all. It's just like a party. I like it. Hey, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> well, wedding, one wedding planner said what her what her brides and grooms want is a euphonic aftertaste. Euphonic? What does that even mean? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's well. I guess we're not related to. It. It's related to euphoria. Like it's this idea that it's just the best party. you. Oh, okay. okay. It sounds like a rave then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. A rave. <laughs> wow. A rave 48,000 times every weekend. It's going to be quite the year. When did these invitations start rolling in? <laughs> I need to get to work here. <laughs> Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Okay. A big thanks to Rothy's for being a constant and fantastic supporter of Satellite Sisters and for making such beautiful products that I'm obsessed with, Julia. <laughs> I can't I can't stop with the Rothy's. Can you? I know. Well, Leon, I'm sitting here talking to you with my cheetah loafers on mm-hmm. and they're just so cute. I might not be able to talk anymore because I'm staring at my feet. Yes. What, and you're always thinking, what's the next Rothy's that I want to get? What do you have in mind, sister? Well, here's the thing. You know, I am going on this book tour. It, it, oh, you really? know, yes. Yes. So it's exciting. <laughs> it kicks off. And maybe you've heard I have a book coming out in April. And, you know, the, the cover is a beautiful purple. And I know this sounds kooky, but I enjoy dressing like the cover. First of all, it, it helps me yes. have my book tour outfits and also people like it and it's cheery and I don't get to leave my house much. I also love purple. So, yes. so I have been on the hunt for Rothy's purple shoes. I have got a really cute pair of the sneakers and a really cute cha- pair of the flats that oh, yes. came. They were purple and sort of sparkly, a purple and pink. Right. I know I will be getting a lot of use out of those. I think I can stop now so that I don't become a caricature of myself, <laughs> but <laughs> like Mrs. Grape or something <laughs> like just all in purple. Yes. yes that's not Rothy's fault though. No, it's, not, no, no. It's, mine. No, no, it's not because they make <laughs> stylish, uh, stylish shoes really cute patterns. Did we mention that they're washable Leon? Very no. good when you're touring around. Yeah. Right. And I've had some of my Rothy's three, four years now. So they're super durable. And I love that about them. So if you want to check out Rothy, you have to buy purple. First of all, I call it, I call purple. No, if you want purple, <laughs> okay. go get it. Okay. But here's what you do. Step up your shoes and accessories this spring and get ready to be asked, are those Rothy's? because that happens. Plus get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash sisters. That's a great deal. $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash sisters. And rothys is spelled R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash sisters. We love having KiwiCo as part of the Satellite Sisters family. KiwiCo is defining the future of play by making it engaging, enriching, and seriously fun. They create super cool hands-on projects designed to create a lifelong love of learning for kids and the young at heart. Isn't that what they always say, Julie, the young and the young at heart at KiwiCo? Yes, Leanne. You know, now, you know, I'm a grandmother and I love KiwiCo because I think it's a great grandparent gift. I mean, if you're a grandparent, a godparent, an aunt, an uncle, if you maybe you're, you know, you're a parent and you're looking for some way to engage 
each of your children in some stimulating, fun activity, KiwiCo is the way to go. Now, I, my middle grandson, Ben, okay, I got, he's a tinkerer. So I got him the tinker crate, the wooden automation. And I like these crates because they are definitely age appropriate, but they stimulate the kids. They're, you know, that's a little bit of a challenge to put it all together and to use it. But Ben loved this because he could create this wooden automation to make this marble climb up the stairs. But then he could like fool around or tinker with it and and make the marble do different things. So it was a very engaging crate that he used multiple times. Fantastic. Well, that's the way to do it. If you want to get in on the Kiwi Co action for the child or the tinkerer in your life, redefine learning with play, explore hands on projects that build creative confidence and problem solving skills with Kiwi Co. You can get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with the code SISTERS at kiwico.com. And here's how you spell Kiwi Co. K-I-W-I-C-O, KiwiCo.com, promo code SISTERS. That's 50% off your first month. Thanks, KiwiCo. Okay, people, it's time for the announcement of this week's Cooking with Liz installment. Uh, Did you miss the cheeseburger pie last week? In case you did, I just want to remind people that Cooking with Liz, it used to be live in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group, but now it's live on our new YouTube channel. So I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I have a personal goal, sisters, to get a thousand subscribers to our YouTube channel, YouTube channel by like, I don't know, first of April. How about that? Okay. That's a really good idea. I'm enjoying the new channel, Liz. I find it very easy to find uh, your cooking with Liz episodes. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, and, you know, yeah, yeah. it's really the only thing on the channel, but, uh, but, <laughs> but it's easy. The latest one is right there, you know, yes. rather than yes. scrolling through a lot of uh, Facebook posts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. We, we are posting the uh, podcast episodes there now too. So there will be more as the year goes on, but okay. So last week was uh, the impossibly easy cheeseburger pie from Betty Crocker. And like, I'm still eating some here at my house because I made I made the test batch and then I made the live batch and then I made an extra one for the Super Bowl. So that's a lot of cheeseburger pie. That's a lot of cheeseburger pie. <laughs> well, you didn't have surgery, so that that's good. Just right. it's hearty, you know, you're you're getting your strength back. That's good. Yes, place. it's good comfort food. Yes. So they, but I did I got a written review for my cheeseburger pie from my neighbor Bernard, Bernard across the hall, who I've talked about before. Like Super Bowl Sunday, I had some extra cheeseburger pie. So Bernard got a serving. And uh, then he texted me this. It's so nice when you get your reviews in writing from your neighbors. He said, (laughs) thanks for that cheeseburger pie. I'm sorry I have waited this long to taste one. The cheese was almost like bechamel and the peppers gave it a zing. I'm like, bechamel? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Thanks, thanks, Betty Crocker. That's Julia Child. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's, your, that's a different territory. Yeah, that's some high end food language when it starts to taste like bechamel. And I did add some peppers to the Super Bowl batch because, you know, the previous batches, I felt like it could get I could kick it up a notch anyway. So that's all posted in the in the uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, and the recipe is there, too. So uh, thank you for everyone who recommended cheeseburger pie. And of course, thank you, Betty Crocker. Now this week. I'm stepping away from the Betty Crocker brief and doing biscotti. Now, first of all, I'm doing the biscotti. This is Sandy's recipe. Sandy, longtime listener and member of the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. Um, This is her biscotti recipe. And her friend Nancy has been hounding me for a year to make Sandy's biscotti. Okay. So so I just thought, okay, (laughs) I knew that this week I would be working on one leg. And I thought, what's a nice, easy thing for the mobility challenge? (laughs) And so I thought, biscotti, this could be biscotti week. So I'll be there live in the Satellite Sisters YouTube channel. That's 5 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday, um, doing the best I can, you know, on old lefty, making Sandy's 
biscotti. So please join me live because then everyone gets to comment while we're live. And there's a lot of conversation back and forth. It's very, very enjoyable. But if you miss that and you want to watch it afterwards, of course, it's there. And be sure to subscribe. A thousand people by April 1. Did I say that we're already at like 775? No, we so, can do it. Yeah, this is doable. I know there. Are, we have to focus on getting a lot of people married too, but you know, <laughs> there's, this is the other thing you need to be focusing on. So, so I'll see you Thursday night, 5 p.m. Pacific time on the Satellite Sisters YouTube channel. All right, Liz, I love it. A thousand people. That should be totally doable by April Doable, yeah. Smash that subscribe button, people. Uh -huh. Smash it. Um, I just wanted to quickly announce a couple of Northern California events for the uh, Lost and Found in Paris book tour. One I just added last Friday. Um, first, I'm doing a writing workshop in Belmont, California, and that is an all day humor writing workshop. So that's like hands on Leon. We'll be writing, we'll be talking, we'll be critiquing, and you get a signed copy of the book. That's going to be in Belmont, California. And then the second is on Sunday at the, the lovely book passage in Corte Madeira. That's in Marin County. Uh, it's a classic bookstore, well-respected indie bookstore. I'm very happy to be signing there on Sunday. I should always have the dates nearby. Sunday, April 10th at 1 p.m. I'll be signing there. All these events are at my website, leandolan.com and the events page. There are links in the show notes. I've been spreading the links around, but just for Northern Californians, two opportunities. I have never done a signing or an event in Northern California. I guess I did one in Sonoma County. So never mind. I should stop saying that. I correct going myself. back. All right. You're right. I'm going back. I'm going back to Northern California, beautiful Marin County, April 10th. Join me. Okay, sisters, it's time for entertaining sisters. And I would like to recommend uh, the new Netflix series, Inventing Anna. This is a nine part series on Netflix. It's created by Shonda Rhimes and it stars Anna Chomsky, Julia Gardner and Ariane Moad. And this is the story of the con artist. Do you remember this new story of Anna Sororkin, AKA Anna Delvey, who posed as a German heiress and she conned all these New York socialite, socialites and the art community out of a lot of money. Um, and uh, she was sent to jail for this. Uh, so and so this is a pretty interesting story. It has the tagline on the show. It says this whole story is completely true, except for all the parts that are totally made up. <laughs> which I thought was good. Okay. So, and, and I love this. Um, I'm about halfway through because it does star Julia Gardner, who uh, she, Ruth from Ozark fame, she is back. She is fascinating in this role. And this person, this Anna Sororkin in real life is also to me kind of fascinating how she was, you know, a daughter of a Russian truck driver who grew up in G Germany and somehow moved to New York and talked her way into like this big glamorous life. And she was about to open a $25 million club, um, you know, and it was, you know, it was all talk. And uh, but she got caught and she was sent to prison. But uh, last year she was uh, released from prison. Um, and when she was released from prison, she wasn't really sorry. You know, she regrets the way that she went about certain things, but she really kind of feels like she had the right to make something of her life. It's almost as if she her defense uh, or, you know, is she was going to fake it until she make, made it. And mm -hmm. she doesn't see herself that different from other famous people or other entrepreneurs who have a dream and are going after it. You know, it's it's kind of interesting. So she was released from prison. She um, she had to pay restitution to various hotels and lawyers and other people that she owed money to. But she did get Netflix to buy her a whole new set of designer clothes. <laughs> she, she's going to be out on parole. OK, so this is good. And then she had to report for to her parole officer in Brooklyn. And she used to show up in Brooklyn in these designer clothes. Sometimes she would rent a limousine 
to take her to this, you know, like rundown parole office in, in the Gowanus section of Brooklyn, um, you know, because that's who she was. She was working. She's working on like an underwear deal with the Kardashians. OK, she, she's writing her own memoir. I mean, she has she's working on a, a, a new clothing line. Uh, and she's sort of her inspiration is prison loungewear. That's mm. what she's mm. working on. No, yeah. seriously, she, seriously, seriously, seriously. Was- yes. <laughs> so she has. She's come. <laughs> yes, Liz. This, you know, she's come. She's come out, and she just still wants to be a VIP. Still wants to be famous. And it was all kind of, you know, she was back at it. But then um, her visa was up uh, and uh, she may be the only person in in America that's facing deportation, but she was she is facing deportation. So now she's back in jail in an ICE facility waiting for uh, to be deported to Germany. So uh, but uh, she's not giving up. She feels like her memoir is going to come out and that's going to be even bigger than the Netflix series she has going on right now. Wow. So I, did, I didn't know any of this before me watching either. the first couple no, no, no. of shows. So, shows. so oh, okay. It, it's adds a, to it. Adds to it, it. It's a fascinating story. This is a well done little ne- uh, Netflix series. I think it's well acted. I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. Wow. So much information on that. I guess I am going to have to watch that. Okay. And I do love her on Ozark. She's so great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you just, sometimes you want her to break into that Ozark accent and drop some (laughs) F-bombs in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) But she she doesn't. She's got that. She's got this interesting. Inventing Anna. All right. Well, I have a little um, Satellite Sisters breaking news regarding the Oscars. Mm -hmm. So this morning, ABC television announced that three women will be hosting the Oscars this year. So that's, of course, the first time this has ever happened. Uh, they're tr- at this point, they're desperate to try anything to get people to watch the Oscars. And they're like, OK, let's just go with the women. Let's do like this is the we'll g- give this a try. But three really funny women, Regina Hall, who uh, was so great in Girls Trip and good in Nine Perfect Strangers. Uh, Amy Schumer, of course, from Inside Amy Schumer and movies like Trainwreck. And Wanda, uh, Wanda Sykes, who I still love from the new adventures of old Christine. That was such a great <laughs> show. She's great in everything. She's, She's great, in everything. great in everything. Blackish, everything. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, anyway, so they're going to be hosting the Oscars. The Oscars are Sunday, March 27th on ABC. Now I mentioned last week because the, the best picture nominations had come out and the, you know, the most nominated film was the power of the dog. And I was like, Oh God, I couldn't make it through that. Am I really going to have to watch that? Um, but many of you gave me a pep talk in the satellite sisters, Facebook group that it's worth it. Try again. Okay. Maybe I will, but I'm not going to watch Dune. No way. And I'm not watching nightmare alley. No way. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. So my question for you two is, um, would this make you more likely to watch the Oscars? Now, my feeling, I'll go first. My feeling is I'm never going to miss the Oscars. <laughs> I know I should. I know every year I think, well, that was stupid. That was a long waste of time, but I just can't imagine not watching the Oscars. I don't know why. So I'm just wondering what if you guys have a policy on watching the Oscars and if you care at all who the host is. Julie? Uh, No, I'm not going to watch the Oscars. I'll probably watch, you know, I like to see the runway. I like to see the fashion, but I haven't seen any of these movies. And uh, no, I I, and I haven't enjoyed the Oscars in the last couple of years. I think that it's just sort of a miserable show. So (laughs) That's, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. My opinion. Yeah. So there's so there's nothing they can do to make Julie Dolan watch the Oscars. Okay. All right. No. Okay. Uh, right. So ro- watching Russian figure skater, not watching Oscars. Is that correct? <laughs> Is that where we're at? <laughs> yes, Leanne. Yes. Okay. Leanne, very how about you? Complicated position. Yes. <laughs> I always watch too. Sometimes I care more than other years, but I will tune it in. And I do like to support, you know, women doing anything. So yeah. I'm interested to see how these three interact. Remember the last couple of years, they haven't even had a host, right? right. It's been right. those weird unhosted things. So, uh, so yeah, I'll probably tune in, but do I think this is going to make 
millions tune in. No, but no. you know, they need somebody to, to, to lasso the show and to, to move it along. Okay. So, All right. yeah. Well, best of luck to Regina Hall, Amy Schumer, and Wanda Sykes, of course, you know, Satellite Sisterhood. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's, let's give it a go, sisters. Let's, let's do it. And if, if, if you have uh, thoughts on if there's anything that can make you watch the Oscars, we can, I'll put that question in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. And please weigh in. I'm curious. <laughs> All right. Uh, quickly here, we've got to wrap up. Um, I have a new book list out over uh, at um, bookshop.org, but there are links. I'll put links everywhere. These are my recommended spring reads for uh, spring 2022. I've been reading a ton of books. Uh, so these are books that I, either I have read or I have on my to be read list. Uh, lots of great recommendations there across a lot of categories, everything from nonfiction to short story collection, to, you know, fun mysteries, to, uh, to historical fiction. So lots of fun lists there trying to keep up with my reading and recommending of books. So that is going to be um, in this week's pep talk. So you Great. can subscribe over at SatelliteSisters.com. I also want to issue a correction. We have a new sponsor, Everlywell. It's the at-home medical testing company. And apparently, I, maybe I said, called it Everly at some point. I just want to make sure everybody knows the sponsor name is Everlywell. E-V-R-L-Y-W-E-L-L. Everly Well is the name of the company and their website is everlywell.com slash sisters for 20% off um, any home medical tests. We all did them. We enjoyed oh, yeah. the sponsorship. Yeah. So just wanted to make that correction. Everly Well, Everly Well. Okay. All right. Uh, another announcement. Our next show will be on March 1. We would like to thank Sergio Enriquez for his, um, I was about to say his support of Satellite Sisters. <laughs> he does support that. He, he does. does. Yes, Absolutely. We know he's out there. We can't see him. He never turns his camera on, but we believe in you, Sergio. <laughs> we know you're there. Uh, he is our audio engineer. A big thanks to our graphic designer, Emily Loudermilk, who does such a great job with our graphics. You can see all of Emily's fantastic work at Instagram or at, in pep talk. And on Instagram, we're at sat sisters. I feel like Liz, we should thank Kate, our webmaster too, Kate and Chev. Yes. She does a great job um, maintaining satellite sisters.com. Yes, we have a website and we keep it up and we do hard work over there. So uh, it's a great place to visit if you haven't been there. Yeah, we always forget to mention it because we just like take it for granted. But yeah, SatelliteSisters.com. There's action. Oh, yeah. right. oh there. Um, okay, so our to-do list for the week. Well, for me, just happy birthday to me. So <laughs> yes, happy birthday to you. Happy Leanne. birthday, Leah. Yeah, yeah. Hope it's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have some light. Okay, you know what, Mike? Yeah. Oh, okay, good, good. And apparently a, a birthday party for Liz is throwing you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, you know what my to do is I am going to try the Martha Stewart Chardonnay. I mean, that Martha Stewart, I saw her at the Super Bowl like she was everywhere, right? <laughs> She's, She's everywhere. 80 years old. And there she is in her little camo vest. She's hanging out. OK, I'm try I'm going to buy a bottle of that stuff and I'm going to I'm going to try it. OK, <laughs> I have a full report next week. Well, maybe she should get in on that prison loungewear collab. I, I didn't want to say it, but that she seems like a natch as an influencer for that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Liz. My to do. I think the hardest thing after surgery is the long stretch before you're allowed to take a shower. So I'm really looking forward to taking a shower later this week after my catch up with my surgeon. Okay. So that's it. It's going to be a highlight of the week. Long, okay. hot shower standing up on both legs it sounds like a huge week for everybody so. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes okay well sisters and have a great week you too Leon. you too Leon. and don't forget call your satellite sisters